the phrase, be still and know that I am God. Sometimes in the most holiest of environments, the most holiest of settings, celebrating the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ, the author of our faith, the one that gives us salvation, the one that offers us forgiveness, the ones that give us the very intimate parts of our lives, when we try to celebrate his birth, we go chaotic. It gets so busy. So sometimes we get so frustrated at preparing, we don't have time to worship. Are you like that? Is our family like that? Around the hustle and bustle of Christmas morning and the Christmas events, we get so busy going in debt, doing so many things, that we cannot take time and understand that God wants us to worship Him. It's not about the presents. It's not about the food. It's about the event. The event that took place in a manger 2,000 years ago that has transformed your life and mine. So we take it for granted it's Christmas. It's the Christmas season. It's right after Halloween and the Christmas trees are in the department stores. They want to celebrate Christmas for two months. But they forget the purpose behind the event. And the purpose behind the event is Jesus. We want to call it Xmas. We want to send our Xmas cards out. We want to do all kinds of things to nelegate the point. Nelegate, is that our word? <laughs> ah, I did it again. We want to get to the point where we lose the focus of what Christmas is all about. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to confess a sin. My favorite Christmas show happens to be Christmas Vacation. Okay, let me ask you a question. Does any of us have an Uncle Eddie? I mean, we have those guys that show up at our door that pulls up their RV, and it's just like, I was trying to find last night. I was trying to find clips of Christmas vacation to show on a Sunday morning church service, and guess what? There aren't any. So it's one of those things that is funny, but you know what? It's probably not Christmas time, but the event is so true. Clark got so busy wanting to have the Christmas vacation and wanting to have the, the Christmas bonus to put a pool in and have a wonderful time decorating the tree. He gets so busy on the event. It takes catastrophic events before he realizes it's not about the things, it's about the person. And so often, all the way back to the earliest of days, when Jesus was being born, the chaotic events was happening then, and the chaotic events continues to happen now. You know, we can think about those perfect little families that have the perfect little stories. And uh, I read the story between Martha Stewart and another lady, and Martha Stewart was getting ready to tell about her Christmas morning, and this is what she said. The perfect delight note is being sent on paper. I made myself to tell you what has been going on. Since it snowed last night, I got up early and made a sled out of an old barn wood and glue. I had painted it in gold leaf, got out of the loom and blanket and, preacher and peaches and mauves. Now it's time to start making a placemats and napkins for my 20 breakfast guests. I'm serving over standard... Uh, I'm serving the old standard Stuart 12-course breakfast, but I didn't have time to make the tables and chairs this morning, so I used the ones I already had. I did take time to make the dishes out of the breakfast for the Hungarian clay, which you can get at almost any Hungarian craft store. Well, I must run. I need to finish the buttonholes on the dress I'm wearing for breakfast. I'll get out the sled and drive the notes to the post office as soon as the glue dries on the envelope. I'm making love, Martha. And then this story. I'm writing this on a blank of old shopping list. Pay no attention to the coffee and jelly stains. I'm 20 minutes late getting my daughter up from school. Anybody can relate to that? Packing the lunch with one hand and the phone on the other. The old rough, my dog, needs to be bailing out. He got caught 
out running against in the yard. Burnt my arm on the curling iron when I was trying to make those curly fries. Still can't find the scissors to cut my own snowflakes. Tried to use the old disposable razor, trashed the tablecloths in the process. Tried that cranberry thing, frozen cranberries, mushed up after I defrosted it in the microwave. Oh, I don't use fruity pebbles as a substitute for my Rice Krispie snow cakes. Unless you happen to like the disgusting grade of green. No smoke alarms is going off. Talk to you later. Love, Irma. Sometimes what somebody's perspective of Christmas is the perfect presentation of Christmas is not reality. When we look at the perfect presentation of Christmas, let's look at your home and let's look at mine. Let's not look at what somebody else is doing for Christmas, but let's tie in what Christmas could be through the lens and the focus of not Martha Stewart, but of your life and of mine. What is the priority? Do we come across to a lost and dying world that Christmas is commercialization or is Christmas Christianity? What is the priority of Christmas? Ebenezer Scrooge said it this way. What's Christmas time to you but time of paying bills without money? A time of finding yourself a year older but not an hour richer. If I could work my will, every idiot who goes about with a Merry Christmas on his lips should be boiled with his own pudding and buried with a stake of holly through his heart. Wow, that guy didn't want Christmas, did he? Until his eyes were open and he understood what Christmas is all about. Let's look, if you would, in Matthew chapter 2, verses 13 through 15 at first. There's three things that I want to share with you about Christmas. Christmas is not a stamp. It's not a thing that happens every year. It happens every year the same way, the same way, the same way, the same way. Christmas is evolving. It's evolving because it's the way that you and I handle Christmas is what changes the event. Our families, where we go, when we build a family, where are we going to go for Christmas and where we're going to go for Thanksgiving and when we have kids and who's going to buy the presents and are we going to go to Christmas Eve over here? We're going to go to Christmas Day over here. Are we going to have dinner over there? All of a sudden, when we get older and things start taking place, the Christmas spirit is evolved to a point where it becomes so chaotic and all we try to do is we try to balance happiness in the event of Christmas. So Christmas, first thing, can just become a hassle. Christmas can be a hassle. If we do not put a priority on the event of what Jesus has done for us through the birth, then Christmas can really become a hassle. And there's no difference between our hassle and what Jesus had to go through. Listen to this. Now when they had departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, take the young child and his mother, flee to Egypt, and there until I would bring word, for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed for Egypt, and there was still unto the death of Herod that he might be fulfilled, which he spoke to the Lord through the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt I called my son. Even in the first Christmas, even as a young child, Jesus was hassled. Jesus was hassled to a point where an angel had to confront him and tell him, this is where I need you to go. Hassle. Sometimes in Christmas, we get so bought up with the hustle and the bustle and the hassle of Christmas that we have to look back. Even Mary and Joseph and Jesus had to deal with the hassle of Christmas, the moving around, the events. Now, when you look at the hassle of Christmas, you know, and I understand the, you know, the families, and I look at, I look at single moms, and I look at divorcees that are taking care of their kids, and how hard it is to get your kids to one place to the next, and to have a single mother or a single father trying to take care of the kids, and the financial strain on that, and I know how hard it is when a, when a wife has lost a husband, and I know that you're taking care of your kids, and, and you're looking at Christmas, and you're looking, Christmas 
becomes not an event to celebrate. Sometimes it's a hassle to endure. And sometimes because it's a hassle to endure, the events of the holiday, the joy of the celebration become so much a depression because of the hassle of the event, we lose sight of what the event is about. And sometimes when everybody has the utopia life and we look like the Martha Stewart family and everybody is doing their thing and open up their presents and everybody's having a great time and right around the corner, sitting in the same church that you sat at on Sunday morning, we see families after families after families that are going through the Christmas hassle instead of the celebration of Christmas. What do we do? What do we do? Do we not have the celebration of Christmas because others are having the hassle of Christmas? I believe it's very important that we understand that people are going through things in the evolution of Christmas within our own families. And I love what people do. I love what people do is they say this very simply, what can I do? The greatest thing that you can do is to share what you do with someone else. To give to somebody else. It doesn't have to be a lot. It doesn't have to be a hundred bucks. It doesn't have to be fifty dollars. It could be looking at somebody's need and because they are in chaos and they probably would never tell you they're in chaos but because of their hassle just like Jesus just like Mary and just like Joseph they were hassled. But you know every time that they were hassled God provided a way. And then not only the hassle of Christmas But I believe this is a bigger one. In the chaos of Christmas, the hurt. The hurt of Christmas. The the hurt of Christmas is when you look in people's lives, the pain. Because when you look at an utopia, Martha Stewart life, you can look at that and say, oh, what a wonderful picture of a masterpiece a Christmas could be. But then you look at a row over and you see a husband and wife that just got a divorce. Or you see a child that is going through very medical expenses. Or you see a lady that her husband just passed away. And they're going to experience Christmas for the very first time with a void sitting right beside them. And when you see that void, the Christmas, although it could be a joyful event, but when you get down to the heart of our life, Christmas is full of pain. It's hard sometimes to see the songs and to hear the joys and understand everything is wonderful and great in their life. But sometimes we want the wonderful and joy in our life. And how do I want to celebrate Christmas with all the hassles that are going on, with all the pain that's deep within my soul that I don't want anybody to know. I want to put the mask, the facade, and everybody think that everything is wonderful and great, that everything's awesome in my life, and I'll buy the Christmas presents, and I'll, I'll eat the ham, and I'll do whatever I need to do with the smile on my face. But it doesn't do anything with the hurt in my heart. What do we do? Do we act like it doesn't exist? The hassle was there. The hurt was there. An angel went to Joseph and said, Joseph, I need you to do something. I need you to get Jesus into Egypt because Herod is jealous. And when the wise men went back and they, they, they told Herod a lie, Herod's anger came up and against him. And he said, I'm going to kill every baby two years and younger. Every baby in Bethlehem, I'm going to die. The hurt. Could you imagine the soldiers coming into the city with the moms and the dads knowing that they have a baby and when they started looking at that baby, covering that little baby. Could you imagine it? How many of you guys have babies or children two years or younger? Just raise your hand. Two years or younger. And a king says, I'm taking your baby. And I'm going to put your child to death. What would you do, Spencer? Would you fight? Guess what? Spencer, you're going to die. But you know what? You'll die for your child. Just because it's an event, there's hurt. There's hassle. Early Christmases 
were not any different and maybe even more chaotic than we have now. But every time in the hurt and the hassle, God always provided a way of escape through every issue. It's a hassle. It's pain. But you know what? In every situation, God rescues them. In Psalms chapter 34, verses 18 through 19, the Lord is, never, is near to those who have a broken heart and saves such as has a contrite spirit. Many are the afflicted of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. What happens to the broken is God's going to come beside you. With the hassles of life, God wants to give you peace. Just like he does with Jesus, the angels gave him peace and comfort and gave him direction. Just like the hurting. Just like the hurting. When this Christmas could be the hardest Christmas that you have ever done. Or maybe it was five years ago. Or maybe it was ten years ago. And you remember the pain. You remember the agony of wanting to buy that Christmas present. Wanting to see that baby open up that present. Or wanting to see your dad smile when you bought him that present. Or you wanted to see the time that you did something special for that child or for that parent or for that brother or for that sister. And every time that you look around that Christmas tree and you sit around that dinner table, there's a vacancy. There's that void. It's never ending. The hurt of Christmas. And that's why Christmas season is a very depressive time. So the dichotomy is this. We sing about the joy and the wonders of Christmas. But in that, the pains and the hurts of Christmas. So how can we blend them together? How do we blend them together is just what we watched. The baby Jesus, who was born in a manger, is the same Jesus that died on the cross. The only hope that we have is not in what we can do for others. The hope that we have at Christmas is that we understand the hope is in Jesus Christ. And we have to realize and we have to take full advantage of understanding that God has promised us approximately 70 years on this earth. But there's more than life here. This is salvation here. And Jesus was born, Jesus was God's son, part of the triune Godhead, a perfect lamb of God. And he decided that he was going to fulfill God's reconciliation plan, his redemptive plan. And he came to this earth as a baby, through a virgin. And he lived 33 years. And he died on the cross. And he went through pain. And he went through the hassle. And he went through every one of those issues just like you have. He was tempted in every way but without sin because he knew that the only hope for mankind is the redemption of their sin upon the cross that he died on. The hope of Christmas is not in the hurt and it's not in the hassle. It's not in the busyness. It's not in the chaos. It's when we are chaotic and when we are busy and we are in pain, that we can bow down before Christ and say, I need your hope. I need your peace. I know that Christmas is going to be different this year. And I have to realize that it's because of Jesus I can do Christmas. I know there's a loss. I know that there's a void at the dinner table. I know there may not be smiles and there may be tears, but understand that Jesus understands your fears, your tears, and your pain. So, Thursday, getting ready to eat around my family. My, my father just passed away a few years ago, and this is the first time all of our family got together since my father passed. And you know what was very good for me it was just I I'm the preacher so Bruce will you say a few words and will you pray for us so I just got to say thanks to my dad 
And this is the first time our family got together without my dad being there. And I just said thanks for allowing us to continue to have a family and to, to have fellowship. And I just wanted to say thanks to my dad and the way that he raised us. And it was very therapeutic for me. Although there were tears in people's eyes, there was a smile on their face. Because sometimes I believe the worst thing that we do is stick our head in the sand and act like the problems do not exist. But at Christmas, we can thank God that God has given us hope and help in the times of celebration. So when we are looking at what we can do, there's three things. There's going to be hassle. In that hassle, understand that Jesus had hassle. He had problems every day of his life. And he trusted in God, and God directed his life. There's going to be hurts. Unbelievable, painful, terrible hurts. If we allow the hurt to overshadow God's peace... The pain becomes victory. But if we allow the pain to be under God's love, what happens is we can use that pain to bring glory to God and to help others by talking, by sharing, by loving. Pain. You could all write down line after line after line of things that have taken place within your life that have hurt you. And maybe if it's during the holiday season when Cousin Eddie comes to the house. We all have a Cousin Eddie. We all have somebody that, you know, oh, I, I don't want to go because he's going to be there. If I get stuck sitting beside him at dinner table, I'm going to shoot myself. I mean, we don't want to sit beside that person. But in doing that, that person needs somebody to love them. And if we can be the vehicle in order to minister to the hurting, the struggling, we are using God's peace, God's forgiveness in our life to be the vehicle to minister to the, the hardest people to minister to is your family. It is. I was sitting with my niece this week and we were talking about my past. And uh, she was saying, I can't believe you're a preacher. And I said, I said, why is that? She goes, Bruce, I know what you did. I said, I said, yeah. I said, I know, but you know, God forgave me and all this stuff. She goes, yeah, but I just can't see you as a preacher. I said, you know, so you know why it's hard to minister to your family? Because they know everything you did. They know you. They know your anger. They know what you did. They know your stupidity. But yet, what God has told you is. If you are under the blood of Jesus Christ and you're a saint, blood-bought saint of God, what you have to do is say, I am going to use my testimony to bring glory and honor to his name even if it's hard to testify to my family. Because forgiveness is real. Forgiveness. So we have the hassle and we have the hurt. The question is, do you and do I provide hope? Hope. Do we cause chaos? Or do we deliver hope? Do we calm the environment? Or do we create the environment? At Christmas time, can we be a settling, a gentling agent of saying, let's take a moment and talk about why we are celebrating Christmas. Let's take a minute with our kids and tell the story of what Christmas is all about. Or is it more presents, more gifts, what we can do, how many things we can go do? Or is it calm? Let's remember, the reason why we celebrate Christmas is because God's Son came to this earth. He was born of a virgin, which was miraculous in its own right. But he lived for 33 years without sin. He died on a cross 
for your sins and mine. So when he accepted my sin upon his back, I am sinless. Me? Yeah. Because I accepted what he did. He died for me. My substitutionary death. So when Jesus was taken off that cross, and he was buried in that tomb for the third day, he arose and conquered death, hell, and the grave. And then he ascended into heaven. The process was complete. Part of the triune Godhead left heaven, came to this earth, redeemed mankind, now back with the Father. Is Christmas about the presence? Is Christmas about the busyness? Is Christmas about the chaos? Because if Christmas is about the chaos, the presence, and the food, we've lost the priority of Christmas. Jesus had chaos. He had the hassle. He had the hurt. He delivered the hope. You have hassle. You have hurts and I have hurts. But what we can do is we can give to people the hope of Jesus Christ. In a lost and dying world, let our Christmas be hopeful in the midst of chaos. And bring a smile on somebody's face that is hurting, that is struggling. And just say, I love you. You, you love me. I love you because Christ loves you. And he gave me the greatest gift of salvation. And what I want to do in return is I want to give back to you. You know, it said that we can live for, for days without food, days without water, but we can't leave, live minutes without hope. Minutes. When we lose our hope and our will to live, we just fall apart. We just quit. And when we quit, there's nothing within inside us. We die deep within our soul. And there's people today, probably in here, between the Thanksgiving and Christmas season, that are just dead. They're dead within their soul. The pain is so real. The agony is so overwhelming. And what they need, they need hope. They need somebody to let them know God loves them. And they're not in this battle by themselves. And Christmas doesn't have to be chaotic. It doesn't have to be a hassle. It doesn't have to be full of hurt. It can be hopeful in the midst of chaos. That's our challenge. Let's not this month get so full of Christmas we lose the sight of Jesus. And if we have Jesus at the forefront, we will be who he wants us to be. And that is giving others hope so they can see Christ in you. It's a reproduction of our Christian life. Let others see Christ in us in a very chaotic time at Christmas. It's a great story. But you know what? There's no difference between the world and Christians if we allow the chaos to hamper our, fo our focus on life. Let Jesus be the focus and not the chaos of Christmas. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Father, Lord, we come before you, and I pray that we'll just guide, and you'll guide within our hearts and our lives, and you will touch us. And as we have spoken today, as we're going to look at for the next three weeks, how to deal with a chaotic Christmas. How can we focus on you and honor you in every aspect of our life. I pray that you'll be with us today. And Lord, let me point out that we know that we have hassles. And life is tough. And so often we're pulled in 15 different directions and we really don't know what to do. So those that are in here that are so chaotic in their life right now, they don't know what to do. I pray that you'll give them the calmness that they need to have to take a step back 
a deeper breath and to realize they don't have to be so chaotic. They can calm in the midst of chaos. And Lord, those that are hurting, those that have major issues within their life, those that have lost family members, those that are going through major issues within their families or within their kids, I ask you, Lord, to touch their lives. And Lord, as we sang earlier, we need to bow our knee before you. And we need you to touch our lives. At this Christmas season, let us give hope to a hopeless world. And the only hope that we have that can change their life is Jesus. Your birthday. It's your celebration day. Let's not get so busy enjoying the day that we forget why we are doing it. And that's to honor you. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Would you please stand to your feet? And you know, at Christmas time, I think there's not a greater way to start Christmas than to asking Jesus to give to you the peace and the joy within your life. To understand what it's all about. To have the reality of Christmas. That we don't get stuck in the chaos, but we put a priority on the event. So, if you're hassled, if your life is going every direction, but you don't know where to go, maybe you're hurting, and you just need God to touch you. You don't know what to do tomorrow. You don't even know if you want to be here tomorrow. Let God help you in that scenario. And then, ask God to give you hope, and give hope to others that are around you. An opportunity, an invitation, is just for you to talk to God. You to thank God. We've gone through the Thanksgiving season. We've thanked our families. We've thanked our friends. But have we thanked God for what he's done for you and preparing our hearts and preparing our lives for the next phase, the next phase, this next few weeks of celebrating his birth and giving that hope to those that are hopeless. Let us sing this song and let us respond to talk to God. If you have issues, you want to pray with somebody, you'd like help, we would like to minister to you at this time.